And we are up and running, I think. Five seconds late today. <laughs> Another super sunny day. Blue sky and we're at exactly the wrong time. You know, I can't put the camera out on the street. The sun shines directly, I mean directly into the lens. So I've had to pull the camera back inside the, uh, inside the alcove there. If we care to, partway along the stream after half an hour, so I could go out and move the camera. Whatever it's up to you guys, call it if you like. So. And unfortunately, we got no cherries visible from here, but they are out. I was out walking for a few minutes last night, and they are out in full, at least right here in Tokyo. <coughs> some parts of Japan may be finished already, some parts not started. Here in the Kanto area, this weekend, well, today, this some Sunday is going to be rainy. Today is the day. And everybody in this city is going to be out today having a look at some cherry blossoms. I don't have a camera. You know, I've got that little, <laughs> I've got this. So I went outside last night. I got to show them some pictures of cherries, you know. So I went outside like this last night. <laughs> the dorkiest dude in Tokyo. I got a couple. It's just nothing. I mean, this is down the river. This is Blur City. It's like, whatever, 200 pixels wide. That's the Asahi Beer building, of course. So, and then this is from the uh, embankment there. That's the the new walkway. You see the lights on that bridge. That's the new walkway. Our street has been extended across, so you can walk from here to the Sky Tree easily without getting bothered by cars and stuff. And it was—is it almost a full moon last night? I don't know. Not quite a full moon. Almost a full moon. There you go, bingo. I waited for the right moment. But there were people out there with real cameras. They were, they were like, oh my God, there were whatever, millions and millions of people out there. And a bunch of them were doing time lapse. There was a bunch of five old guys in a row. They had their cameras all set up, tripods taped to the concrete. And you could see the cameras they were doing, you know, every few seconds. It was time lapse stuff of this moon. So for people who are into photography and stuff, this is yesterday and today are the days for this stuff, absolutely. I'm going, to, once we're done here with the stream today, today I am going out for the day. I'm not going to be sitting here working, but it's not random cherry blowing, blossom. Today is, uh, whatever, I'm going to visit, I'm going to visit Taran-san today. Lady with shoes there. That's not our shoe lady. She came about 15 minutes ago, whatever. Yeah, you, there's lots of people, I don't know, whatever. Just Google Tokyo Cherry streaming. There must be all kinds of people streaming. I saw one yesterday afternoon here after I came back from there. There was a, a you know, the rickshaw cart driver. <clears throat> and he had, no, no passengers, he had the camera on a tripod in the buggy. And he was talking as he went, gesturing to it. And it must have been a live stream. The camera was sitting in the place where the customers normally sit. And he's rolling along, running around town, doing this, pointing about this, doing his spiel. So people from overseas can book one of these rickshaw cart trips, and you get a rickshaw cart trip. They stick the camera right where you're going to sit, and away they go. <laughs> the bizarre world, bizarre world. It's not secret. Know, we talked about this before. Taran San and I are going to, whatever, we're going to look at some carving, talk about stuff, see what's going to happen. But near his house, there is one of Tokyo's most spectacular, spectacular places to see cherries. Ano, what's it called? Etone. I keep forgetting the word, uh, the name of this place. I'll drop a link on you here. So, Zenpukuji, I can never, ever, ever remember this. It's the Zenpukuji River Course. This one, this is a link here. And this is near where Taransan lives. So, we may end up strolling around there today. Is Wi Fi free in the streets of Tokyo? Some like bus stops have it, and there's a few. The old telephone boxes used to have it, but I think they're all gone. I don't know. I don't know. So the video boy that used to come. Well, I guess it's history. I don't know. I don't I haven't heard from him for quite a while. No idea. What was his name? I forget. I can't remember his name. He had. He took up some English names. Show. Sure.
Yeah, any, any coffee shop restaurant, of course, has Wi-Fi. Absolutely. And some of them are actually not really well secured. So if you go and sit outside a restaurant, there's a good chance you can... Uh, Tommy, that's right. Tommy, good. <laughs> Okay, what we are doing this morning, as you can see, it's done. I finished it off, was it last night, the night before? I don't know, I finished it off around the outside. A couple things, what you're seeing here, look at the mess. Normally, we don't hit the plywood. We have our wood on the top here, and normally, it's about five millimeters. And it's extremely rare, as in basically it never happens, that I get down to the plywood. But when Aoyama-san Aoyama was making these blocks, of course, we're slicing up our bigger pieces of cherry, and we shoot for a goal of five millimeters after planing. So he'll cut it six or whatever rough, we glue it on, plane it down, dress it. But he's got his fat pieces that we're slicing up, slicing up, slicing up, and we can't always get them exactly six, whatever. So he had a piece left over that was about, maybe it must have been four or something. Talked to me and said, what are you gonna do about this? And I said, use it, use it, use it, it's a good hard piece. So he stuck it on, it was four millimeters after planing and dressing. It's almost all gone here at the edge. You can see it at the edge here. Oh, can we see this? That's so there. There you are. So as opposed to the normal six, five or six we get left, this only had, it looks like it's about three. So we only had three. Now it doesn't matter for the top surface, but it means that when I start to do some wider clearing out, of course, we go past the, uh, we go past this and into the plywood. So this looks a bit embarrassing for me, but I don't care. There's no way around this. This was three. But the cool thing is in the image itself, even in the wider places here, I still didn't get past three millimeters. Okay, it's done. It's done, but this is stage one. So for those of you who know what's gonna happen, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a test proof this. I'm gonna pour black pigment all over this and I'm going to proof it onto a sheet of white paper not our normal printing paper, just a sheet of, just whatever sheet of copy paper, it doesn't matter, just for the first rough proof, of course. And almost certainly, well, 100% certainly, it will need refined carving. Now, a couple of things, if I'm, for example, I'm gonna refine the carving in the calligraphy, but that will have no effect at all on the color separation, which is the next step. So what I'll do is I'll print it, and the lines that will be the dividers between colors, I will look at this morning. And if they are okay and don't need refining, I will go ahead today and take the color separation proofs. If some of these lines that are gonna define colors need refining, I have to do that first before I do the color separations. You can't take your color separations and change the line. Did I photograph? I did, I photographed, I scanned it. I don't have it sitting right here ready to pop into the stream, but yes, I put it on the scanner yesterday and scanned it. So we've got a record of it, like it, like it matters. Paper's out, yes, paper's out. Ishikawa-san's coming, you'll see her in the doorway. She's coming in a few minutes. Okay, let's do this. Let's do this. Make it moist first, then black. Put a paper and print it, and you will never again see this nice, clean piece of wood. It matters, what matters, I forget. Let's do this. Oh, for, but that's the thing, okay. Anyway, I did, like I said, I scanned it, so whatever, I'll, I'll get it to, it has been scanned. This is just water at this point.
I can see already we have a little problem with this block. Anyway, let's go. Here we go. There we go. First shot. First shot. Let's see how it turned out. Let's see how she turned out. Again, as I said, this is draft one. Absolutely, the calligraphy will need refining. Absolutely, we knew that. Peonies look like peonies, whatever. Lots of refining. Look at this. Look how stiff those eyebrows are. They've got to come down. There's a ton of work still to do on this block. This one too. Look at this. You can see. Look at that. Puppies. Lots and lots of work. But anyway, as I said, the critical point today right now is can I do the color separations? All these fine lines inside the dog, they have nothing to do with the color separations at all. It's lines like this. The line that will define this ground, river, and sky. The edge of the cartouche, for example. Eh? This is dry paper. You see the square, because the paper, the paper's sliding around here. This is not wet, careful printing paper. The reason why it's sliding around is this, and this is something that's going to be an issue when I print this. Let's zoom out a bit and explain what's going on here. Those little dots and stuff here, that's where, that's where I put my fingers on the back. And the reason I held it down was because we're not in the registration marks. But also, do you see this? This area here, look at this. Darker, darker, up in the middle. And that's because this block has already warped. This block is not flat anymore. Because it was five millimeters on one side and three on another, the forces are different. And this thing has I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? This thing has already warped. I get my head out of the way, it might be better. What's well, worse? Let's put a sheet of paper behind it. Look down that line. It's cupped already. This thing is warped, and the printing side is now, luckily, if that's the right word to use, the printing side is convex. If it was concave, <laughs> we'd be hoes because the barrel doesn't go down into holes, <laughs> but it's convex. So I showed this to Aoyasan last night and he's like face palming and I'm face palming and what are we gonna do about this? And, and we, look at it, we can see what's happened. The piece on the back, the five millimeter piece on the back, the grain, can you see this? The, the, the arches of the grain are arched this way. And clearly we didn't wait long enough till it was dry. Now this wood is still trying to move. And when wood, the plank of wood is trying to move, it moves in such a way that those, those grain lines want to straighten out. So if you've got a plank and the, the grain lines are arched this way, that block will warp this way and it will cup on the top because those round grain lines want to straighten out. So this one, do you see it here? You can see the grain lines. They want to straighten out, which means the stress on this one is this way. And look what we've got here. Focus, come on, there, look at this. See what you see there? It is already pulling up. Come on, focus again, you had it, there it is. It's pulling up. Now, our own glue bond, the bond between the cherry and the plywood is super strong, but the internal bond, come on, focus again, you had it there. There it is. The internal bond inside the plywood is splitting. So that back side is pulling up. 
So what we're thinking we'll probably do is we'll split it off. We'll take the backside off completely. Put on another piece thinner that will be more stable and that will pull this back in shape. Now none of this actually, if this was a, if this was a, a, a natural piece of wood, which was really moving and shrinking, it, it would be disaster. But because this is on plywood, this top face really is not gonna move anything more than a fraction of a millimeter. But it makes it difficult to print. I put the paper in there and I'm rubbing and rubbing, and I don't know, I'm rubbing on the top of an arch. So even given all those problems, let's move ahead with this. This is all stuff, you know, when I was doing this 15 years ago, 20 years ago, problems like this, you, the piece of wood like this would have been just thrown away. You get a piece of wood like this and just like, you gotta be kidding, this is gonna make a wood box, right? Just throw it away. But now this is the best we've got. This is the best we've got. And it would have been thrown on the floor in laughter. We would have just been laughing. Ha ha ha, somebody wants to make a wood box. <laughs> Look at this joker. <laughs> we would have just been laughing ourselves sick. And now this is all we have. We're trying, we're still searching. We, Aoyama-san bought some more cherry just the other day. He was down at Shinki, but the guy showed him some stuff and uh, he bought a few more pieces, and we just don't know. There's nobody left on this planet who can look at the log of cherry and say, that's gonna be a good one for wood blocks. There's nobody with that skill. Okay, I can see one place. I do need to fix this before we paste this down. Here's why, take a look at this. The cartouche here, the cartouche is a border zone. The inside will be white, the outside will be sky. And look at this, a couple of the lines on the cartouche here are too thick. Look at the corner, it's an ugly corner. So I've got to fix that now. If I do the separations first and then cut this later, there might be a white gap in the sky. So give me a few minutes. We are gonna to have to do a bit of carving here before we do the color separations. So a few touch-ups here. out there, the wood is in the forests, beautiful trees just standing there waiting to be harvested, dried properly and split. But there are so, so few customers for this at the level like we want to do this. There's just not enough demand to maintain a supply chain. There's just no way around it. You know, so. We're working on it bit by bit by bit by bit by bit. We're working on it. But uh, we won't get it back before I die. No, no chance. You know. Okay, here we go. So just trim some of this. A few minutes work trimming this before we do the color separations. Some of the lines are a little bit too thick. These four corners may have to come off.
Yeah, this one especially way, way too thick. Look at this, gotta come way down. Okay, I think we're good to go. Now, are there any more places that need to be looked at before all these leaves are borders? Now, this is going to be leaf inside, sky outside. But these leaves, I mean, they're ragged, random shapes. They're okay. They don't need to be delicately looked at and infinitely finessed and stuff like that. They're fine. They're good to go. Same thing with these branches, that's a border, but it's a clear, clean line. This one, this is a major border that can stay. I think we're good to go, let's do this. Let's start the color separations, we're okay. For those of you who haven't seen this before, what we're gonna do is this. We have a key block, which has got all the outlines, and we need five other blocks to make this print. For example, there will be a block that will be the sky zone. It'll be blue, there'll be a block for the ground. It'll be brown or green. There'll be a block for the flowers. And each of those blocks has to have the information just for that zone. So the block for the sky that we will need to print the sky let me mock it up here just a second. This zone will be sky. All the way down to here and inside here. And we need to be able to get that information transferred onto another piece of wood so that we can cut that shape to print the sky. And the way we transfer it is this. We're gonna print this key block now. I'm gonna print it. I'll see the sky area, and that can be placed on another block, and that will transfer the sky area to another block. And to do this, we're using our patented double layer paper. I prepared this last night. We have our thin gumpy sheets. I used spray glue, our normal spray glue, low tack 3M55 spray glue to make a double-faced paper, a, a double double paper. And I have a bunch of these sheets, which I will now print. <laughs> no, it is not really patented, no. Isn't that an expression? Now the first sheet I took a few minutes ago, when I did that first rough prep test sheet, I just slammed the paper on the block without thinking about where to go. I ignored the registration marks. These next sheets that I'm gonna do now have to carefully, of course, carefully, carefully, carefully go in the registration marks.
Sumi smell, sumi smell. Spraying the low tack, I know it actually doesn't matter which comes first. We do it different sometimes. What I did last night was I put the thin gumpy paper face down on one of these empty blank blocks just to use the flat surface. Then the yellow paper, I took it outside, and then I laid the yellow paper onto the gumpy. But you can do it the other way. It's just mussing around with thin gumpy in the air is a bit more difficult. So rather than put the yellow paper and spray the gumpy, I usually put the gumpy paper down. Another way to do it is to spray the yellow paper and put it down face up, then hold the gumpy, sort of stretching it and laying it down on top. Someone's having a look at us here. Somebody we know? are talking about us. bike is gone, so all the bikes are, are gone. Bicycles have a life of their own, whatever. Lock. 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 Now over the arch. This is going to be difficult for the printers because of this because of this arch, you know. First, careful proof. Let's have a bit more look at this. This is more carefully done. This is still not damp paper. This is still dry paper. That's why I was holding it on the back, because dry paper wants to slide around on this block. So there's a more careful impression. Still a tad thick on that corner, you know. Okay, let me go. Let me go. We need five of these. I need five of these, so I'm going to take six. Give me myself an insurance copy. Oh, yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Because the paper that we're printing is dry, normally our printing paper is moist, it's slightly damp. And when you put it on the block and start rubbing, it just sticks there. It doesn't, I mean, not stick, stick, sticky, but it doesn't slide around. But this one is dry, especially that yellow paper on the back, which isn't even touching the block. So I've got to make sure this doesn't slide. I'm holding it with my other hand. Normally we never touch the back of our paper, never. But this is key not to let this slide around. Looking good, looking good. You can see another mistake here. This is a mistake, whatever. See this little place here? In the middle of the penis there, there's that dot there. It's a place where I didn't clear, obviously. I was cutting those lines, cleared against the lines and didn't clear the dot. There's lots and lots and lots of places that need fiddling and fooling around with here, you know. This is stage one. There's no carver on the planet who can carve it 
never look at it, give it to the printers and say, away you go. It doesn't work that We've got to fix and touch up and... But still, we're 99% there. Someone's asking me how I got into this. That's not a simple one sentence answer. There's uh, lots and lots of, we have a complete autobiography on the website. There's videos explaining how I got interested in this and got going. It's a huge story. So I'm sorry not to just toss you off, but I can't easily answer it while I'm doing this. But it's a 40 year journey too now. I started doing this when I was 29. The very first experiment, I was 29. And I am now not 29 anymore. It's been a 40 year journey. <laughs> 40 years. <laughs> thing about this too is I am so late with this. This is the print that is going to be sent for delivery to our subscribers on uh, May the 1st. Shipping date for this is May the 1st to 200 people. Finished prints, all checked, carefully done, 200 copies, and the shipping date is May the 1st. That's March 27th. And I'm like, oh, okay. And the printers upstairs are looking at me saying, Dave, Dave. So yeah, yeah. It's my own fault. You know, it's nothing to do with procrastination. It's, I fell into this thing of, we do the carving on the Twitch stream. So what we normally started with was Dave was carving and now and then he would turn on the Twitch stream so people could see what I was carving. But somehow the tail is now wagging the dog. And I only carve at Twitch times. It's gone completely upside down and it's not working because like 90 minutes three times a week is not enough to keep to this schedule. <laughs> And my excuse is clear. Our business has freaking exploded. And the amount of time I spend now as the business manager, Dave, is, is just whatever, whatever. I don't know how much I've reported to this bit by bit by bit, but uh, the numbers we've had over the past few months, our business level, meaning, meaning sales level, not profit, but the sales level, revenue level, has recovered now to pre-pandemic levels. We had three parts to our business. The big shop here was 43%, and then the rest was split between online sales and subscriptions. The shop disappeared March 17th last year, but we've now recovered the other parts. But it's, the cost has been, my God, I'm, I'm a full-time, full-time, full-time business manager. I'm back in a situation, those of you who've been following us for a few years now, back in 2017, I made that video, I talked about Patreon, and I was flooded in work. Our business had been so successful, and yet I couldn't handle it, all the paperwork, the letters, the email, blah, 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 blah. I said, can I ask Patreon <laughs> to help support us and hire somebody, and we did, and it's all working well, and Cameron's out there doing all that stuff. And it's all come around again. Now Cameron needs a Patreon to hire someone to help Cameron and Dave needs the same thing. And Nothing about Patreon, that's not the point, but uh, we, we just need people. We need people. We're hiring right now. If, we, if there's three different people, I could take one more printer, two more printers. I need someone to run the flea market because that's gone to sleep. And I need a general manager. I need a general manager, and I don't know how to find such a person. Don't put your hands up. It's got to be somebody here, somebody who speaks and thinks and reads and bleeds Japanese. 
I need a good Japanese general manager. But how to find such a person, I don't know. But it's now becoming a uh, crisis time, crisis. I need one more staff in Ome. Go back, uh, December last year, we were sending 325 prints per month out, subscription prints. Now it's over 550. And the way they're coming on board now, a couple every day, by September we expect it'll be 850 or 900 prints per month going out. The place has exploded. The place has exploded. And the people out in Ome, they can see this train coming down the track, you know. Not only that, once, once autumn hits, after that, the Christmas season hits. <laughs> so the Ome staff is already, already worrying about this to me. Dave, what are you, you going to do in November? What are we going to do in November? And I'm like, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Not. Okay, let's do one of these while you watch. So as I said, I don't know, I don't know, we, most of you know what's going on, a lot of new people here don't know what's going on, so I don't know how much to explain, how much to explain. Let's explain it. There's the transfer sheet. It's thin paper, it will guide the carving for the block that makes the sky. And I could just paste this on the wood and the carver could figure out where to go. But to make it easier for him, me, I am going to mark in the areas that are required for the sky block. And the sky isn't going to be fluorescent pink. The sky is probably going to be sky color. But that doesn't matter at this point. All we need to do is show the zone. We are going to color in here the areas that need to be kept on the block to be able to print a sky. It's such a simple, simple process. And how does the sky block get registration? That corner, that's the registration. So when I paste this on the block, wherever I paste it, it doesn't matter. That spot becomes the new registration marks. It's automatic. We're not following. Have we? Is there a labor shortage in Japan overall? It's upside down. If you go back pre pandemic, there was a massive labor shortage. Massive. It's been a little bit you know, fixed now because lots of companies have gone bankrupt and they're not looking for people anymore, and the people released from those companies are available. So it's not so bad as it was a year ago. But this nub of the problem still is identifying competent people. The same problem you have anywhere, but here in Japan, my God, it's difficult. It's so much more difficult to get a, a sense of what a person is really like when you are interviewing and talking to them. Nobody tells the truth, nobody is open, everybody is all reserved. With no exceptions, all the employees we've got here are different people from the people I thought I was hiring. Maybe it's the same in any other country, I don't know. You can see how it's coming together, right? You can see what's happening. This is the area that will be printing the sky color, bit by bit by bit. It is, this, there's the ground to here, this is ground, this is a river, it's a standard cold Yusai river, it's that circ, in the old, old, old paintings they were cloud shapes, maybe there was no perspective, and there's still no perspective on this. This is ground, that's a river, and that's the sky. There's no sense of perspective in the western sense, so don't expect it. The river will end up, that's probably it over there, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, the river there. It curves around here, curves around here, curves around here. And so the sky will come down to here. This will be sky over here. There's no perspective.
the, the labor thing. We had a meeting. Cameron came down here. We talked about this last week. Cameron came down to sit with me and to chat and talk, and we were trying to figure out what to do, what to do, what to do about the, the labor shortage. And Cameron also wanted to express his own ideas about his own future in the company and stuff like that. <coughs> Where's the garbage truck? Outside. Uh, just turn off the outside audio for a minute. Hi. <coughs> Uh, when Cameron was here the other day, we talked about that very thing, that three years ago, three and a half years ago, we produced a Patreon campaign. It financed us to hire Cameron and, and do it fine. And he has done really, really, really well over the past few years. But he is now, of course, at a stage in life where he's thinking he doesn't really want to be a bookkeeping clerk you know, for the rest of his life, which is exactly, of course, the same, same thing that I understand. So we're trying to figure this out, and part of the problem is, is that the software Cameron is using to do his job is software that I wrote back in 2003 and four as a single user software on my Macintosh. And now the problem is, is that because it's a single user system on one computer, you can't share the work. So Cameron's job is the one that, you know, the, the subscription system running it is Cameron's job, and nobody can help him because it's a single user software system running on one computer up in Ibaragi. So one of the things we discussed last week was that Dave has to build the next level of this system as a cloud-based system, you know, common sense, as a bookkeeping system that works uh, on a cloud system so that Cameron can do it Monday, Tuesday, Dave can do it Wednesday, Thursday, somebody else can do it Friday, Saturday, or whatever. Or we rotate eight-hour shifts and we have a, uh, uh, one of our clerks is in America, you know, we don't know. But before we can, before Cameron can get off that job, I have to rebuild the software. And converting a single user system, which wasn't built on a database, it was built on flat files, converting that to a full database multi-user system with record locking and everything. It's not trivial, but that's my job. So that's what I've been doing in my uh, other hours when I'm not sitting here at the carving bench recently. Oops. You can also see, those of you who have watched this before, you can see exactly what's coming up here. Dave is gonna make this block for the sky. He's then gonna go ahead and make a block for the flowers. And you, can you see what's happening? The sky comes down to here, that's a flower, but that bit in the middle is this sky, I think that sky right there. What about this little piece over here? Is that sky? Yeah, I think this is sky, but you can see where we're going with this. It's really, really easy to miss a spot. And there's no carver, ukiyo-e carver on this planet who's been working for more than two days who hasn't done this, missed a spot or two or three or four. Like this, here's one right there, that's it, look at this. What language am I writing this in? Pink. No, we're working with a standard lamp stack. Just a straight bog standard lamp stack. It's, it's a, we have a shared host server uh, at a rent, rental company in, in the US, not Japan. All of our web stuff runs a, in the US. We don't want to run our, our infrastructure, IT infrastructure in an earthquake country. So we're running a shared hosting system over in a, a, a good solid place in the US, and it's a straight standard lamp stack.
But the current system, as I said, it's, it's uh, running on Cameron's system. There's no database. It's flat files, which you, flat files are fine, you know, it's okay. We don't need relational this and relational that. We just need data. Which customer is renting which, uh, is, is subscribing to which print and how many we got left and stuff like that. Do I have a colored version to reference? No, we don't. Uh, no, we don't. Uh, no, we don't. The core UCI, this is also a different topic here. The core UCI prints that we are, quote, reproduction, re reproducing. We're not reproducing them, we're referencing them. So these prints this year, I think we made it fairly clear at the beginning, we are, we are taking Code Usai originals, which are very, very badly preserved, very, very badly made in the first place, and we are using them as, as base information on which to create a new and interesting print. For example, back in his era, the gradation technique hadn't been invented yet. There was no such thing as gradation. This is the 17... 1730s, 1740s, someone correct me, I don't know. Who's this? Oh, oh, hi, you, hi, you, hi, you. Hi, you, hi, you. Hi, you, hi, you. Hi, hi, hi. So, what are you doing? Send it to Sugi san to Ishio ni Tanashita. Ano, Kao Nashi. Ano, Shippo, Shippo dake desu. Ano, Shippo, Hana. あの、締めてるうちにしない方がいいですね。うん、だからすぐさんとあの、ドライ、ドライのままで。だから、見ました、すぐさんと連絡。あの、LINE は少し。オッケー、じゃあ、ちょっと見てください。この封筒の中にあり
<laughs> hey, I mean, you guys, this, whatever, the benefit of being a, a member and watching the chat and spending all these hours doing this hard work watching this thing, every now and then you get a bit of a bonus, which is a free sample of seeing what's coming up, right? For those of you who didn't catch the conversation, her question to me right now is, her paper, I brought it out of the freezer this morning, her paper is still moist. And what we hadn't decided when she was here last, was it Thursday or Friday, what hadn't been decided at that point was whether to do that kimedashi with the paper in a moist condition or a dry condition. And Sugusan was here on, no, so that conversation was Thursday. And Sugusan was here on Friday and we did our testing and we decided to do it in a dry condition. It doesn't distort the paper quite so much. And uh, the testing she'd done a few weeks ago, she pressed really hard on moist paper and it distorted the paper in the nearby area. We couldn't dry it flat. So what she wants to know now, her number one is, does she go ahead and do it in a moist condition or does she dry her paper first and then does she do it in, in dry? And she heard about Sugisan's results because they talk, they talk to each other on, on message, of course but she wanted to see the, uh, see the thing. Chocolate, it's all about the chocolate. Well, actually, that, that ties in with very much of what I was chatting about before she came. We're using the Kodisai images just as a guide and we are using his sketches to create what we think are some really, really interesting prints. Oh yeah, mask, height, height, height. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's become, you know, you don't even think about it anymore. Mask on, bang, done. You're talking about the coloring book, the company that owns stock of the coloring book. When they went bankrupt, I did contact them. And the person I spoke to was somebody in the receivership end of things, not the company. The company by that point was gone. So I was able only to speak to somebody in the receivership end and they blew me away. Sorry, not, not happening. That company's merchandise is toast. So I tried to buy them. I tried to buy that whole stack of books. I forget how many there were, but the answer was no or it was just too difficult to arrange. So I did try that and couldn't make it happen. So I'm sorry, I don't know where, a few came up on, on Amazon later, I have no idea where they came from. They are used copies somebody sold or they escaped the pulper. I don't have any other information, nor do I have access to information. That company has been bankrupt for whatever it is, 20 years. So I'm sorry, I can't help you on that. Now, 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 as we were talking about, have I missed any spots? Have I missed any spots? Clearly this is okay. That little nice one behind there is okay. Come around the edge. In here, like for example, this little triangle over the head, I don't think that will be sky. I think that would be taken up by leaves and peonies. There's no way it would make sense to put sky there because there's no way you're gonna see the sky through a big clump of a peony. I'm thinking the same for this spot. That could go either way. Now look at this one. I've tagged that as sky. I've tagged that as sky. What about this one? Tell you what, I'm gonna put it in. And if it turns out that it's not suitable we can cut it off with one stroke of a knife, but I cannot put it in easily. So I'm gonna tag that as sky. Down in here, there's your line for the river. The river line goes here, but I think that's flower. This is a clump of a flower. Or not. I think flower, it's flower to show. This is sky, here, 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 these are sky. Again, in the middle of these, it makes no sense to put sky. This itself is a huge flower. 
You're not going to see sky through the middle of it. This thing too the same, that's flower. There's a leaf behind it. I think we are good to go. I think we're good to go. <clears throat> okay, speak up, speak up. <clears throat> speak up. Anything I should be my backup here. Someone's saying, right above the head, in between the two flower petal lines. You're talking about this one to show? Right above the head. Again, that flower, I think, has to be supported somewhere. I think this is going to be green. The flower is this shape here, this shape here, and behind it will be green. I can't imagine that we would still have sky visible behind this huge clump of a flower. I think it would look strange to have sky there. So I'm going to put that as flower and this one as flower. Flower or green, one or the other. That's ear. And again, how is the river in the sky? Forget perspective. This is not perspective. This is a, what you would see if you were looking from a, the sky. There's river and just that's the way it's done. We'll, you'll see later. We'll talk about it later maybe when we're printing this one. Believe me, this is the way they did those things. Don't think Western perspective because it doesn't exist. Ah, do you want to go? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> He's apologizing to me and I'm apologizing to him. The episode, you know, I don't know what I talked about. Did you see him just now? He's like, he came in the door and he looked through the glass. Is it okay to come in? What was happening was when I, <clears throat> when Cameron was finishing his video up a few weeks ago, I had to do an intro for it. So I tried to do an intro for it in the evening and there was so, so much noise. No, and that wasn't, no, no, I know, we had to fix it. Cameron had had my original intro, it was no good. He was too polite to say so, but it was obviously no good. So I had to do a new one. And he wanted to put the video out that day. So in the morning, instead of when I normally do them in the evening, I was sitting here in the morning, seven o'clock. Got myself ready. Good morning, this is Woodblock Penmaker Dave Bull introducing a video for blah, 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 blah. And I got part way through it, brrr, motorcycle goes by. Okay, no problem, take one. Cut, 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 ready, go up, set the camera, start again. And I did so, whatever, I made a mistake in my speaking or something. Cut, take two, take three. Get it going, take three, something else went wrong. And they were like three cuts, four cuts, five cuts, six cuts. I got one going, and you know, the story's coming, I'm partway through it, and the guy comes in, delivery, because it's this time of day. <clears throat> and he bangs the door and puts it in, and I was just so frustrated. I did something really bad, I banged the table. What are you? And he's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I was the jerk. He's just delivering the package, you know. So, so I, the next day when he came in, I apologized that, look, I'm sorry. I was upset. I was frustrated. And he's, he's, okay, 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 don't worry about it. But now he's gun shy. <laughs> he looks in the window to see if it's okay. <laughs> they are really nice guys, and they work so hard. My God, they work so hard. He will have started. I mean, he's delivering here at 9 o'clock, so he will have started whatever, seven or something, the trucks come. You can hear the trucks, they come about seven, unload the huge trolleys. The trolleys are semi-sorted because that's the way their system works. It's like FedEx coming into Atlanta or whatever. But he then has to get out on the street and deliver these things all, and most of his customers are, where's my stuff and where's my stuff and what's going on? Okay, we'll use this block. It's fairly smooth. Someone's got a question. Tom 1060 says, there's a spot to the right of the top leaf bordering with the flower. And there's a spot, I don't even know right or left, what are we talking about? There's a spot to the right of the top leaf bordering with the flower. The leaves, all the leaves are bordering with the flower. The top leaf bordering with the flower. Is this what you mean? I think that's flower. I can't believe sky would show through that leaf. 
Nothing could be in there. I don't get what you mean, Tom 1060. Yep, that. This one you're talking about here. Whatever, I'm going to call that flower. I'm sorry, I'm going to call that flower. I don't know. That leaf, in fact, we can't actually see how the leaves are supported. Do they have thin stems? It could be sky with a stem. I think it would make more sense to do that just as green or as flower, I think. Someone else, on the lower ear and above the river curve. On the lower ear and above the river curve. So this is sky. This one, this river leaf, and we see hair. And how much of the sky is going to show through the hair? I see your point. We could, well, I don't know how finicky to get here. We could put a little tiny dab of this in there. We could do that. We could do that. We could do that. Fair enough. I think we were good to go, but I just remembered something else. Just when I got the piece of wood out here, I was thinking about the top and bottom, paste this down, carved sky. <coughs> Excuse me. There's another decision to make here, actually. We have sky and we have ground, and maybe they could both go on the same block. This is river and this is ground. I'll just, let me just color it just for a second just to show you what I mean. This area down here is ground. And over on the other side, this is ground. And our normal rule is UB Sambon. You put three fingers down. And if the two color sep zones are separated by three fingers, clearly there's enough separation. The girls upstairs, actually, in Chonsan, they've been calling for two. Now, this is a big fat one. <laughs> I don't know. But, but, but. The way that they're laid out, if you imagine that we were printed, someone's printing, this is gonna be here. So a right-handed printer is gonna brush the ground there, totally no problem. They can brush just the ground, print it, and away they go. If they're brushing the sky, they would be brushing here, brushing here, and with the heat of their brush, they could come down into the ground, not touching this. It breaks the rules, but we could get away with it. Do we need to get away with it? Because I don't want to make extra trouble for the printers that's not necessary. What's our count? We have, count with me, we have the key block one, we have the sky two, leaves three, water four, flower base tone five, flower tint six. The ground would make seven. We can't, well, we can. We can have an uneven number of blocks. That means one face is left blank. But if that we need, we need four pieces of wood. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven blank. We need four pieces of wood. If I can take the ground and mix it with the sky, then that means we only need three pieces of wood. So I am thinking, I am going to do this. I'm going to do this. We could try and chop it off. Yeah, we could, everything is flexible. Everything is flexible. It doesn't work, add a new block. That's what we're doing right now. This is a different story. The eight cats series, the third print. I've seen the first test prints. They were done. That's what suki -san was here doing on Friday. She did the test prints for the third print in the eight cat series. And they are terrible. But we knew, we knew, we knew. Six blocks do a first test and now look at them and think, okay, another block here, another block here, another block here. We're gonna build it as we go along. Okay, so let's do this. Let's put the ground on here. And that means we start all over again, trying to figure out what's in and what's out.
I hear footsteps on the stairs. Is this cause I'm coming down again? Here comes trouble. What's our time? Show and tell time coming up. For show and tell today, we do have show and tell. We have, uh, for the first couple of minutes of show and tell, it is going to be a recap. I have a small, tiny, one or two minute recap for something we showed you, uh, I think it was a week ago or two weeks ago. There's a recap. And then we have a new item, and it's... What did I do with it? It's an unboxing. But where actually, where is it? Um, it's here somewhere, whatever, whatever, it's here somewhere. And we have our same problem. This is a tough one. What's ground in here and what isn't ground in here? Look at this. This is going to be tough. Okay. I think that's it. Well, except for this, what about that place there with that little dot? And what about this? What about those? This is a breast, that's a breast, that's a breast, that's a breast, she has four teats here. That's a dog's head, that's, well, that's space in between, that's a face. Okay, what's your consensus? This one here. That's ground, I think, to show. Her foot comes here. I think this is ground. Yeah, that makes sense. Look at that, now that it's colored in. This is too, look at this, look at this. What about this piece? What about that thing right there by my finger? Yeah, I'm going here in a minute. I'm not, just wait, I'm not going there yet this minute. I'm gonna temporarily put this one in. We can cut it out later. Again, this is another one of those. Put it in. All right, I think we're good to go here. Now, the tail.
Somebody thinks this is puppy neck. I'm with you. I too think this is puppy neck, but I'm buying insurance here. I think it's puppy neck, but as I said, this is insurance. Relax, don't panic. It's far better for me to do it this way than to make a mistake the other way. John is saying, I don't think any of these three spots are ground. But if, John, if that's not ground, is what is it? Her right leg is here, her left leg is here, her right leg. The body shape comes around here. She can't have three tails. Oh, it's the spiral of the tail. The tail comes round. I gotcha, I gotcha, I gotcha. Oh, I see. Okay, that's what it is. The middle one is the tip of the tail. Look, 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 look. Here we are. Tail goes round, 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 and this is the tip of the tail. This is ground. Look, 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 look. Got it? Crowd power. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna call it. Good. Time, 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 9.13, we are running out of time. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? That's always the wrong way on the grain. No matter what I do, it's always the wrong way on the grain. There's our registration marks. So again, it doesn't matter where we put them. It doesn't matter where they go. Let's do a dry run here. That will go in, in, down she goes. It's been a while since I've done this. He he he. How many times in my life have I done this though? Actually, how many times? Who knows? A bit too much. So 
horse glue, it's an or arabiki gum. It's the stuff, the mucilage that we used to have in school when we were little kids. the unneeded backing sheet. It's done its job. First stage booster now lands on the drone ship. Ready for carving. So again, for those of you who are the first time seeing this, there we now have a piece of wood with a tracing on, and you can see the concept. The, 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 once the wood is carved, leaving this pink area, it'll, everything else will be taken away. We'll just have the pink area left. We then put blue pigment on it, slap the paper on, and we will have a blue sky. And then a green ground or whatever it is we want to do with it. That's the magic of the color separations in Japanese ukiyo-e prints. Bingo, 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 bingo. Our leftover gampi, and we've, we've played with this a while back. We can actually use this again if we want to. We could use this again, so. <laughs> All right, it's supposed to be show and tell. I can't reach the package. It's over there somewhere. Go, let me go and fetch it. Hang on a second. Just drop the mic. Sorry about that. Somebody swiped it. Okay, we are running late. It's 921, but whatever, who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Okay, I said there was gonna be two parts to the show and tell today. I said there was gonna be a recap of something we did the other day, and then we will do an unboxing. Because we are running late, I'll forget the recap. We'll talk about that later. What we have today is a new stuff coming in. 
and it's a little bit of, I know, deja vu is not the right word for it, it's a little bit of a, you've seen some of these before in a similar format, let's I know, get this. There's not enough room here. Yeah, flashback or something, whatever, whatever, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. No green tape on this, unless this guy used green tape, no idea. The magic number today is 18. 18 is your hint. John, 18, not ringing bells. Come on, get with the program. Once I show you, you will do the face pump. Oh, that. Go to the Mocha Hong Kong collection and search for 18. Packaging, packaging. Really show. I really need more room for this. You know, we should have a separate studio for our show and tells. And now I'm moving to Studio B. The shorter 18 stations of Tokaido. No, 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 no. Come on, you got eight. Somebody's got it. Somebody's got it. Where's the chocolate egg? Chicken Meister. Chicken Meister. Is that the first one? Maybe somebody earlier got it? We are talking Kabuki. And we're talking Kabuki Ju Hachiban, the 18 famous Kabuki plays. Oh my God, this guy has, oh, World War III couldn't open this. I love Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to open this because I want to reuse some of this stuff. Not going to happen. Has to come open. Sorry about this. One minute to go. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week. How are we going to get in here? Okay. If somebody can blink, please, too, on our collection page, on the Mocha Hong Kong collection, if somebody could search up and link to the Kabuki Ju Hachiba, the 18 famous Kabuki plays. And it's in the Mocha Hong Kong collection in the Showa era reproduction. In the early Showa era, a block set was found and people did a reproduction of a print set that was made back in the Meiji era originally. And what we have here today, we don't have the full Kabuki Ju Hachiban, the 18 prints. We have six of them from the original Meiji edition, published in, I think it was 1890, no, 1880-something. We will find out in a minute here. Okay, level one, level two, level three of the packaging. Level four of the packaging looks like original stuff. Let's have a look. Oh, look at this. It's got the original wrapper. It's got the original wrapper. This is, this is just nothing. Here we are. Kabuki Ju Hachiban. Daime Ichikawa Danjuro. This was a set of prints made. We'll have a date in a minute when I get, look at this, this is the original wrapper. Give me a break. You never, ever, ever get the wrappers. People threw them away, of course. You never get the wrappers. Don't tell the guy who put this on auction, but I would have paid double or triple for this. These are not the full set of 18, it's six of the original 18. 
and for dating, somebody get your dates ready. This is Meiji 29, the fourth month, the 20th day. Meiji 29. And you've, if you remember, we showed some of the Showa reproductions of these earlier. These prints are among the most dramatic, grotesque, uh, blinged woodbuck prints you would ever see. They're grotesque, actually. They're grotesque. But they are great, great, great fun. And what we're going to try and do here is catch the embossing, because they are embossed within an inch of their lives. The paper, every square centimeter of the paper on these things is embossed. And it's thick, rich, luscious paper. And these things have just been blinged up like crazy. The other day when I showed you that, uh, that beautiful print, the Yamamoto Shoun, the beauty, I pointed out the hair and how it had Shomenzuri. We have, if I can find the right angle, and it's not gonna come up easily today, we have Shomenzuri on this hair. I can't find it, Dave, find the angle. <laughs> I can't find it. <laughs> Whatever, take my word for it. There we are. We got a bit of it. There are there are hair patterns all shined and shined up through this hair. You can see bits of it there. And the, the point of the Jyuhachiba, the, the, the clan, the Danjiro clan, selected 18 prints. And this is way, way back, 1830s or maybe even in the 1700s, I don't remember. They selected 18 particular kabuki plays that had the most famous Aragoto style, the famous rough stuff style, because that's what these guys you know, specialized in. And most of those 18 plays are no longer performed. They're not really literary interest, but they were ones that really showed this. These are cool. I am very, 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 and I mean very happy to get these. This is the play called Yanone. This one, oh, I never remember how to pronounce that one. Showing my ignorance here. I'll remember some of these and some of these I don't remember. Look, it's mostly the original wrapping too. Look at this. This is Skeroku, the play Skeroku. Now these are not prints, these are sculptures. Yeah, Uwanari, thank you, thank you. These are in nice condition. This is yellow to die for, <laughs> literally. Next is Kenuki. Kenuki. I don't remember the plot. It's something to do with, there's a nail clipper. This is the old traditional nail clippers. You could pull hairs with them. I don't remember the plot details. And coloring and embossing and coloring and embossing and coloring and embossing. It's just fun. The yellow has arsenic, that's right. The yellow is half sulfur, half arsenic. I'm so happy to get these. I'm happy with these, the show era set that I've got. Remember, I can't remember. Somebody got it. Eighteen. I've got a list of the eighteen. Which would it be? Hang on a sec. There is a list here somewhere on my desktop. There is a list here. That'll be big dancer. This can I? Get that, sir. Get that, sir. Somebody got it? Oh, we're in there together, but I had to look it up. I didn't remember.
whatever, you like these or you don't, they are just outrageous. There's no, every square inch of the paper is full of color and riot and embossing and they're just outrageous. They're totally kabuki. I mean, this is what kabuki was about. This is what kabuki is about. So I'm saying how we store these, we will never hang these up. These go into portfolios in our collection. There's no exposure to light. Ideally, they should be brought out at least once a year to get some exposure to air. In fact, in a, in a climate just like this, when it's a not a rainy day, a nice, good, clear day, they should get exposed a bit to some air once a year or so. And the classical museums that have the staff to do that sort of thing do that. But no sunshine exposure. I mean, look at the riot here. My God, what a riot. And the last one here, and again, I, I'd have to refer to my list of the 18. Ah, oh, yeah, this is Narukami. Kami, Narukami. I believe we have somebody coming from the depths of hell. And, and the hair carving, the hair carving, the hair carving. This is getting boring. We see this every time I show you a print. But look at this, the scale. That'll be three or four blocks. There's a key block with the hair on. There's a gray block, which underneath, which comes down to about there. You can see it. That's a level of one gray block. It's got a fuzzy edge. Then there's a black block with, with no hair, a black underblock. Then there's a final black block with hairs carved onto it. So we're looking at four blocks to make this head. That guy had fun. The carver had fun this day. <laughs> Bob Ross hair almost so. <laughs> gradations inside the eyes. Now, unfortunately, there's only six of them. If it would have been a full set of 18, my God, but I wouldn't have been able to afford it. Absolutely. How much did I pay for this? I can't remember. Hang on a sec. Let me find the page. This was not a dramatic at all. <clears throat> this, was not a, this was not a budget breaker. Boy, it was not a budget breaker. Look at this. Sometimes deals come up. There's the auction page. What did I pay? Fourteen hundred, fourteen thousand. So that's uh, about one hundred and forty dollars. About $140 for the six of them plus the folder. There's all kinds of stuff here too. There's, look, you can see there's stuff in here that I can't even see. There's, her inner kimono is shined up. And I don't know, this is makeup, I guess. Remember, this is kabuki. These are all men. There were no actual women involved here. No women were harmed in the production of these prints. This is kabuki. These are guys. And anytime you see a female type character in a kabuki play, it's, it's played by a, a guy. I'm not the kabuki expert to, to give you the, the show and tell of what, what all these people are doing and what's going on. Did we find the angle there? There we are. No, we can't see. So the angle, there is a shiny hair pattern built into all of these. Okay, there we go. We've run a bit over time. Sorry about that. But worth showing. And the little extra episode I was going to show you, we should, we should uh, compare that later. Okay, there we have it. Good, good, good. Gee, hey, I got lots of work done here today. Thank you very much. How old would I say these prints are? They're dated, they're dated. It says Meiji 29. And I think somebody earlier in the stream put something in, Meiji 29. It's, uh, it's, it's whatever, 1895, so, so. Okay, thanks so much. Today's Saturday morning. I am off for a walk with tape recorders strung all over my body uh, today, uh, today. I'll report back about that later. Next stream here will be Monday morning, my time, Sunday evening. What did somebody say there? Almost as old as Dave. 
Thanks. I'll be back here uh, Monday morning for me, Sunday evening for you. I may be doing more color separations. I may be carving the color block. I don't have any idea what will be going on. It'll be something. Thanks for tuning in. Sorry for going over time. Can't be helped. See you next time. Bye for now. Beautiful, beautiful sunny. This is going to be so crowded today. We came out of lockdown last week. It's a sunny Saturday. There's cherry blossoms on the Sumida River, cherry blossoms in Wino Park. This place is going to be a bizarre, just whatever. It's going to be crowded. See you there. See you next time. Bye-bye. Signing off now.